Hello students and learners, welcome to the channel and from the starting lesson to the last lecture we have completed a full chapter, full chapter 1 that is nutrition the food supplying system and in this lecture we are going to discuss about the revision it means we are going to do the full chapter revision in this lecture okay. Now let us start about our revision the nutrition food supplying system. We know that all organisms need energy that is nothing but food for the growth and metabolism. Growth means increase in, increase in the number of cells or size of the organism that is known as growth and metabolism means sum of the sum of catabolic and anabolic reaction. Catabolic and anabolic. So what is meant by catabolic and anabolic uh, reactions? So catabolism means destructive process. For example, uh, digesting of the food material inside the stomach or in the elementary canal that is the example for the catabolism and here anabolism is build up process here it is a destructive process this is a build up process example in the photosynthesis we will see there is a uh, build up of the glucose molecules and starch molecules that is the anabolic reactions okay next food is necessary for meeting the body temperature each and every organ each and every individual like human beings example human beings has the 37 degrees body temperature so this 37 degrees celsius is very very important for the normal metabolic functions of the body and different different organisms are going to take different types of the food material and mode of nutrition varies from organism to organism example cow eats grass musco uh, musco takes the blood it is a food, uh, liquid food material and human beings will take different kinds of the food material like solid liquid and semi solid and uh, so on so this is about mode of nutrition that is different different in different different organisms so next is uh, what is autotrophs how do autotrophs get their food material so autotrophs means they are the organisms capable of synthesizing the food material own food material so example green plants these are they are going to uh, produce their own food material while coming to heterotrophs, these are the organisms, they cannot perform the photosynthetic process and hence they are going to depend on other organisms, example human beings, animals and so on. So here we are going to discuss about autotrophs. So these autotrophs are capable of synthesizing the chemical compounds, the chemical compounds like glucose, okay. So the glucose, what is this chemical formula C6H12 and O6, okay. So this is the formula of the glucose. So these glucose compounds are uh, these chemical compounds can be synthesized by using uh, raw raw materials like sunlight, water, minerals, carbon dioxide. So these autotrophs includes plants and microorganisms. Example microorganisms. So like uh, cyanobacteria. It is also a type of microorganism. It is going to perform the photosynthesis and they can synthesize their own food material. Okay. So they obtain minerals from the minerals and water from the soil and gases from the atmosphere. Which gas? That is carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide can be taken from the atmosphere for the photosynthetic process. Okay. And here they are saying that the complex compounds, carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, etc. They can be synthesized from the simple substances. Simple substance means example the glucose molecules. Let us consider these are the glucose molecules. So these glucose molecules are synthesized first and these simple substances will join together to form a complex components or complex compounds in the same way proteins like amino acids these amino acids are joined together to form a long chain that is known as polypeptide chain hence we can call it as a protein okay in the same way lipids also form in the same way it means these complex compounds are forming from the simpler substances okay we have discussed all these in the lectures and just we are revising now okay they are synthesized from the simple substances these autotrophs perform photosynthesis so we because of the photosynthesis only they are able to synthesize their own food material and not only for themselves these autotrophs are going to provide food to all animals on this planet okay hence we can call them as universal food providers because they are providing food for each and every organism on this planet okay so these autotrophs are the great so next one helmont he said that he is a scientist one not only one helmont other scientists also believed that the plants get their food material not only from the soil but also from the other sources so what is meant by other sources in their in their perspective other sources means carbon dioxide uh, uh, that is nothing but carbon dioxide from the atmosphere sunlight okay and so on these all are the other sources okay so 
raw materials raw materials like solar energy carbon dioxide and water these are the raw materials that are needed for the photosynthesis with these raw materials only they are cap capable of synthesizing the glucose molecules or energy compounds so what could be the end products of the photosynthesis end products means the glucose what oxygen and water these three are the end products of the glucose uh, end products of the photosynthesis and here the glucose is going to give the energy okay it is energy rich compound it is a sugar and oxygen it is released by the uh, plants during the photosynthesis into the atmosphere we are breathing the oxygen right this moment every time okay next water is utilized for the utilized by the plant itself why because water is essential for its uh, metabolic reactions next is the photosynthesis so photo means light so with the help of light they are these plants are going to synthesize something compound that is known as photosynthesis so the process of building complex organic molecules by using chlorophyll and simple inorganic ones so inorganic means any compound any chemical compound which doesn't contain any carbon okay any chemical compound without carbon is known as inorganic example nh3 can you see the formula of nh3 ammonia so can you see carbon in it no carbon in it so it is an inorganic so what about organic example c6 h12 and o6 it is a chemical formula for the glucose molecule can you see carbon in it in this formula yes there are six carbons whether it may be six carbon or one carbon or a hundred carbons if any chemical compounds contains carbon you can call it you can call that chemical compound as organic okay so these organic molecules are synthesized by the synthesized by use, by using chlorophyll and sunlight and so on so it is a complex and involves several reactions so the first scientist is cb van neel in the year 1931 he proposed the chemical equation by observing the photosynthesis in plants so this chemical reaction is given by cb van neel can you see that carbon dioxide water is utilized along with sunlight and chlorophyll for the production of the carbohydrate water and oxygen so this is a rough chemical structure or you can call it as a skeleton reaction why it is skeleton reaction just now we have discussed so the chemical formula of the glucose is c6h12o6 so it is a carbohydrate it is a carbohydrate so can you see the is it equal is the both chemical formula is equal no here there is only one carbon here is a six carbons here only the only two hydrogens here is a 12 hydrogens only one oxygen here and six oxygens here so the number of atoms is not balancing so this one is the reason we are calling it as a skeleton structure or skeleton reaction so first van neel worked on the sulfur bacteria so uh, uh, sulfur bacteria it is nothing but it is go it is also a, it is also going to produce its energy by you by uh, decomposing the h2s h2s is utilized by this bacteria to produce the energy okay but in this case there is no production of the oxygen oxygen gas is not released in this process why because it is decomposing the h2s it is utilizing the h2s for its energy process but if you see the autotroph autotrophs like plants they are going to utilize h2o here sulf uh, hydrogen sulfide is utilized here the water is utilized by the plants so if the water is utilized what you what you can see there is a production of the oxygen okay this is the most important thing so this uh, cb vanil worked on the sulfur bacteria hydrogen sulfur bacteria so as a result or you can call it a sulfur bacteria as a result there is no production of the oxygen but robert hill he showed that oxygen he, he worked on the uh, on the organisms which are using the water so as a result at the end product of the photo end product of the photosynthesis the, he he showed that oxygen is released okay and he gave the chemical equation so this is a perfect chemical equation why it is a perfect chemical equation why because c6h12o6 it is a formula of the glucose you can see here c6h12o6 this formula and this formula is correct so this chem this is the structure this is a chemical formula for the glucose so you can if you see here the number of atoms on the right side and the number of atoms on the left side is balancing so hence we can call it as a perfect formula or perfect chemical equa chemical equation so the plants also synthesize complex carbohydrates so complex carbohydrates means the carbohydrates the any chemical compounds which are in complex which is formed from the simpler substances 
example stars just now we have discussed the glucose molecules are joined together to form a complex carbohydrate that is uh, complex substances or whether it may be cellulose also cellulose also going to form same kind of from the same procedure so the plants are capable of synthesizing the other compounds example proteins fats etc so along with these uh, these carbohydrates cellulose and so on they are also going to produce these components so they are also complex components or complex compounds so the animals depend on carbohydrates synthesized by the plants example we human beings we are eating the rice what is meant by rice what are the chief component that is present in the rice the sugars like starch and so on so it means we are depending on the plants for the energy source okay so next can we state that the photosynthesis is the basic energy source for the most of the living organisms in the world so yes we can say that the phot photosynthesis is providing the food and oxygen which is a basic source of the energy we cannot live without food and we cannot live without food and we cannot live without oxygen so both are important for us so the food is essential oxygen is essential okay so these two important components are released are given by the plants okay so here in this activity so we have to show that the starch is present in the leaf okay what is starch it is a product it is a product from the photosynthesis okay product of the photosynthesis so in the photosynthesis in the photosynthesis you will see there is a production of the glucose molecules so these glucose molecules are going to join together to form a starch okay so to form a starch so we have to show that the starch is present in the leaves so for that we have to take the a uh, laboratory apparatus so example we have to take one bunsen burner it is a small burner which works on the uh, lpg gas so on that we have to take one tripod stand above the tripod stand we have to put one beaker and we have to fill the water in this beaker up to 70 percentage so after that we have to boil the beaker so we have to take another boiling test tube which is containing the methylated spirit methylated spirit means it is an alcohol okay alcohol containing methyl groups okay that is known as methylated spirit okay and this is a boiling tube containing methylated spirit so we have to boil it we have to boil the whole setup and till now till it is boiling we have to bring one leaf okay we have to bring one leaf and we have to boil the leaf in the water so after boiling the leaf in the water we have to transfer it transfer the leaf into the boiling test tube containing the methylated spirit so what happens if you transfer the boiled leaf into the methylated spirit the leaf is losing the chlorophyll okay so what is chlorophyll it is a pigment the green colored pigment which is present in the leaf so because of the chlorophyll the leaf is going to look in green color okay so the leaf is going to lose color and it looks in this way okay the leaf will looks in this way that is pale yellow or white in color so it is fine so next it is the perfect color to identify the blue black color or uh, the chemical reactions that is occurring after the iodine solution pouring so then we carefully we have to take the leaf take the or take out the leaf with the help of brush okay and place it on the petri dish what is petri dish it is a small glass plate so it is transparent so we have to place the leaf on the petri dish so after placing the leaf on the petri dish we have to check the presence of starch so how do you check we need two chemicals any any one of the chemical whether it may be iodine solution or whether it may be beta diene solution beta diene solution so we have to pour the iodine solution or beta diene solution so if you, if you pour the iodine solution what will happen the leaf is going to look into blue black color why because this iodine iodine is going to iodine plus starch they are going to react to give rise to blue black color okay so the only the iodine only starch will react with iodine okay if you pour the iodine on the glucose okay there is no color why because the glucose is different the starch is different there is structural difference between the starch and also glucose molecules okay so by this way we confirmed we confirmed that the photosynthesis is present photosynthesis occurred in these leaves and there is starch present in the leaf okay
so also you can say that the solar energy is transformed into chemical energy what is that chemical energy the glucose or you can call it as a starch okay next the factors essential for the photosynthesis like carbon dioxide water chlorophyll light and minerals are essential for the photosynthesis so to know this fact to know this fact the scientists took around 300 years to find about them okay so why because in those days there is no much technology to find all these things so next water and photosynthesis it is uh, it is said by the Van Helmont in the previous uh, academic years we have studied the Van Helmont said that the water is essential for the increasing the plant mass so what is meant by plant mass the plant mass is nothing but the weight of the plant okay so this weight of the plant uh, the water is going to play a major role in increasing the plant mass but we came to know that not only water but also other components are essential for the plant body mass increasing of the plant body mass so what are those components they are proteins okay so next starch fats okay vitamins and so on these all are the components also essential for the increasing the plant body mass okay so next we are going to discuss about air and photosynthesis so this experiment is also known as Priestley experiment or Joseph Priestley experiment so it is he, he worked uh, in the years between the year 1733 to 1804 and in the year 1770 he did experiment on the essential role of air so what is meant by air air is nothing but the mixture of gases so in the air you can see carbon dioxide oxygen nitrogen sulfur and so on different kinds of the gases are present in the air okay so in those days they did not know about the different types of the gases that is present in the air but this joseph priestley scientist they he want to know he want to know about the relation between the air and photosynthesis so oxygen was discovered by the, by him that is nothing but uh, uh, priestley and the term oxygen was given by the levisor levisor is different priestley is different the discovered the oxygen was discovered by the priestley but the name given to that gas was lavizer in the year 1775 so he said that uh, he did one experiment so that is nothing but priestly statement here you can see this is the bell jar so the bell jar is transparent glass if you put the transparent glass or you can if you put the bell jar on the flat surface what will happen the air will not es escape or air will not enter into the bell jar and air will not escape from the bell jar into the outside so but the candle is burning condition so what happens after a few minutes the candle will turn off why because there is a important gas is missing which is responsible for the burning condition so in the next stage he has introduced the mouse living mouse and also burning candle so after some time the candle turned off and the mouse is going to suffocate and die so what happens in the third stage so he introduced a mint plant and also living mouse and also candle so what will happen the carbon dioxide or the gas which is released by these two the candle and also mouse so taken up by the mint plant and mint plant is going to release the oxygen so hence they are going to live so there is one question in your textbook so how did the priestly ignited the candle from the outside so by using the magnifying glass by using the magnifying glass so he projected all these sun rays onto the wick of the candle so as a result this is the sun okay so all the rays is projected into the wick of the candle it got very very heat and also it ignited so by this way you can ignite so in the modern days you can use the spark plugs so the spark plug is like two uh, two uh, two wires can be used so high voltage is if the high voltage is passed through these two wires there is a generation of the spark in here so these are also used nowadays okay so this priestly experiment confirmed that the gases exchange was going on and the plant giving out the gases okay it means they are exchanging the carbon dioxide is taken up by the plant which is released by the plant uh, and which is released by the candle and animal and in return the plant is giving the oxygen to them okay so this is the question the plants take care of the take the carbon dioxide through the stomata for the photosynthesis and oxygen is taken through the lenticels so what is lenticels what is stomata so this let us consider this is the leaf so beneath the leaves you can see the tiny pores these tiny pores are known as stomata this stomata is going to exchanging the gases so this is one of the most important thing and next is the lenticels let us consider this is this is the plant okay so the plant stem has some kind of small textures rough textures or you can see on the on its side 
So these are known as lenticels. They are going to help in the exchanging of the gases. Okay, for the cellular respiration. So in the night time, these plants are going to take the oxygen. Why? Because there is no sunlight, and if there is no sunlight, there is no energy production. So they are going to take oxygen at the night time for the cellular respiration, so that they will get some amount of energy. Okay. And the plants carry out the gases through loose tissue in the stem, root, stomata, etc. Okay, the roots also has some tiny pores. They are going to take the air through the roots. Okay, so the choice of gas is required may determine the level of the organelles involved in the process of the photosynthesis and also the respiration. So the next experiment is actually two. It is about carbon dioxide is necessary for the photosynthesis. So here in this experiment we have to see whether the carbon dioxide is important or not. So first we have to take one potted plant. We have to keep it in the dark room. Okay, this is a dark room. So we have to keep keep the plant in the dark room. So what happens? Previously the starch is present in the leaf in the plant. So if you keep the plant in the dark room for about one week, what will happen? All the food material which is present in the plant is consumed. Why it is consuming all the food material? Why? Because there is no sunlight. Whether the presence of sunlight or not, the plant need the energy. Energy is needed, so it is going to consume its own food material which are which was prepared earlier. So after one week, no food material in the plant. So now the plant is waiting to perform the photosynthesis. Why? Because there is no energy. Now we have to enter into the uh, dark room and we have to do some arrangement. That is nothing but you have to take one transparent bottle. In the transparent bottle, we have to put potassium hydroxide solution or potassium hydroxide pellets. So we have to insert half of the leaf into the bottle and half of the leaf outside the bottle. Okay. The reason for adding potassium hydroxide is the potassium hydroxide is going to absorb the carbon dioxide. So why? Because we have to show that the carbon dioxide is essential for the photosynthesis. So in that conditions, there is if you add such kind of potassium hydroxide here. All the carbon dioxide which is present in the bottle will be absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. So as a result, there is no carbon dioxide for the half of the leaf. So here it is completely sealed with the help of rubber stoppers or split cork, and vaseline is put over here to prevent the entry of air into the bottle. Okay. So now we have to keep the whole setup into the in in the bright sunlight. So for three to four hours, what will happen? The plant is waiting to do the photosynthesis. Now it will start doing the photosynthesis. So during the photosynthesis, what you will see, you will see the production of the glucose molecules. These glucose molecules turn into starch. Okay. After four hours, we have to cut the leaf here and we have to check for the presence of starch. If you do this experiment, so here the half of the leaf is going to show the blue-black color and half of the leaf will not show blue-black color. The reason is this half of the leaf has the carbon dioxide, light, and water, minerals. Everything is present here. But this half of the leaf has everything except the carbon dioxide is not there. So the carbon dioxide is missing. So it is not going to perform photosynthesis. If there is no photosynthesis, no glucose. Okay, and if there is no glucose, no starch. Okay, hence the photosynthesis is not working. Okay, so this is the main component you have to remember. So here is the moles of leaf. So we are, have given this experiment as a moles of leaf. Why? Because the scientist mole has performed this experiment, and this experiment is also about only the half leaf to identify the half leaf. So hence we can call it as a moles half leaf experiment, and it is proving that the carbon dioxide is necessary for the photosynthesis. Okay. So here the question: Why we kept? Why we? Uh, why was the plant kept in the dark room and in the sunlight? That is to Remove the starch earlier. That is process known as de-starching. De-starching means removal. Starch is a carbohydrate, or you can call it as a food material of the plant. So to remove the, all the food material from the plant, we are doing the de-starching by keeping in the dark room. Then in the sunlight, to, because to perform the photosynthesis. So why did we take the two leaves? Why? Because to compare to compare the for about the photosynthesis. So next is the light and photosynthesis. So what is the relation between the light and photosynthesis? So the scientists did not understand about the energy in the previous time. Okay, so they thought that the energy will be released when the carbon dioxide and water is produced. So what they are saying, the energy will be released. This energy will be released when the carbon dioxide and water is released. Let us draw, uh, uh, write the reaction. Okay, so C six H twelve O six. Okay, so these are glucose molecules plus oxygen. So 
in the forward reaction you can see the carbon dioxide will be released plus water will be released 12H2O and plus energy so what they are saying energy will be released when the carbon dioxide and water is released okay so this reaction is nothing but it is the it is saying about the cellular respiration that is going to occur inside the body okay so can you see if you observe carefully if you observe carefully this is the looking like the opposite reaction of the photosynthesis so now let us write the photosynthesis reaction 6 co2 plus 12 h2o gives rise to c6 h2l o6 plus 6 h2o plus 6 oxygen can you see it is completely opposite the whatever the components that you can see here is present here whatever the components that you can see here it is present over here so here is the energy that is sunlight chlorophyll so here there is a chemical uh, metabolic reaction like it is going to occur in the mitochondria so this is the thing they are saying the this sentence is going to say about the cellular respiration that is occurring in the human beings or animals and this sentence is saying about the reaction that is going to occur in the photosynthesis okay so they are saying that the reversing the above chemical reaction produces a chemical energy along with the oxygen in the presence of sunlight so both are in opposite direction so one is the, they are in the reverse direction okay so next is john engenhaus in the year 1732 1799 he performed experiment with hydrilla plant and he proved that the oxygen is released during the photosynthesis so this is the main important thing so before we discuss about the hydrilla plant we have to discuss one important thing that is the about the scientist engelman in the year 20th century he detected the maximum rate of the photosynthesis so for this experiment he had taken one a strand of the algae so to strand of the algae means it is, has taken one strand okay whether it may be cardboard or plastic whatever it may, whatever it may be he introduced algae complete algae is introduced we have differentiated the strand with the green color why because algae is a photosynthetic synthetic organism and it is in green color and he introduced a small bacteria that is oxygen sensitive bacteria so we we, we are representing the oxygen sensitive bacteria with the dots okay blue color dots so he projected next he projected the light light onto the strand of the algae so if you if we pass if you pass the light through this prism what will happen you can see colors vibgr v i b g y o r so these are the colors that is present in the light you can see these colors in the rainbow also so in these regions in these this is the region of the blue and this is the region of the red in these regions there is a maximum amount of the photosynthesis how you can see how, how you can say there is a maximum amount of the photosynthesis over here because the all oxygen back oxygen sensitive bacteria move towards the region of the blue region and also red region this is indicating that the algae which is present in this region is going to produce more amount of the oxygen because of the photosynthesis so if the photosynthesis is there oxygen is there if the oxygen is there these oxygen sensitive bacteria move towards the source of the oxygen okay move towards the source of oxygen by this way we can say that the blue and red region are the maximum sites of the or are the regions of the maximum photosynthesis okay so this is about it Engelman and next is the Hydrilla experiment so what is the Hydrilla experiment so here we will uh, discuss in the after a moment about Hydrilla experiment so here you can see so Hydrilla experiment so this is the this in this uh, hydrilla experiment we have to take the apparatus like a beaker a beaker containing the water so we have to bring aquatic uh, aquatic plants like hydrilla hydrilla is aquatic plant why because it is going to grow in the water aqua means water so these plants are placed in the beaker and we have to put the funnel in the inverted position it means upside down we have to put the funnel in the upside down direction and we have to take one test tube filled with water and we have to invert the test tube it means upside is down and uh, we have with the help of the uh, with the help of your thumb close the test tube which is containing water and insert insert above above the funnel in the ups upside down direction so previously every completely test tube is filled with water and we have to prepare two sets like this one set is in the dark room another set is in the sunlight in the under the bright sunlight okay so the set 2 which is kept in the bright sunlight is going to produce the oxygen bubbles 
why because it is a aquatic plant producing the uh, producing the oxygen in the in the process of photosynthesis this uh, this set which is kept in the dark room is not going to perform photosynthesis and hence there is no releasing of the oxygen by this experiment we can say that oxygen is released during the photosynthesis okay so next is our uh, lab activity 3 it is going to we are going to say about we are going to say about sunlight is necessary to form starch in the green plants okay here we can say how the sunlight is essential first we have to take the a potted plant we have to keep we have to do the de-starching process by keeping in the dark room for about one week so after that what will happen the plant doesn't contains any food material and no starch in it so now the plant is eager to do the photosynthesis it is waiting for the sunlight to do to do the photosynthesis now we have to take one black cardboard make any cutout symbol on it here s stand for starch you can use any letter so we have to place it the place this black cardboard onto the leaf and secure it with the help of a paper clips okay then after after doing this uh, arrangement bring this potted plant into the bright sunlight okay bright sunlight and keep it in the bright sunlight so the potted plant is now it is going to perform photosynthesis but only the region which is blocked or the light which is blo blocked by the black cardboard is not going to perform photosynthesis so this is a process so after 3 to 4 hours take out the cut the leaf of this plant and do for, and do the uh, identification test for the starch so how do you check the uh, star presence of uh, starch presence of starch in the leaf take the leaf boil in the boiling water boil the leaf in the boiling water then take it out and uh, dip it into the boiling test tube which is containing the methylated spirit take it out put it in the petri dish add iodine solution now the leaf will show the color if the leaf containing the starch it will show color if the leaf doesn't contain any starch it will not show any blue black color here the only this region the region which is blue in color has performed the photosynthesis and the region which is showing the light pale yellow white color has not performed any photosynthesis why it is not performed photosynthesis why because this region is blocked by the black cardboard and while the s, s is in the blue black color why because it is a cutout there is no black cardboard over here it means the black cardboard has some kind of cutout symbol okay so through this cutout symbol the light passed and there is a production of the photosynthesis and there is a starch it is reacted and hence it is showing the blue black color so this is known as black paper experiment and which part of the leaf turns blue black color that is nothing but the area of the leaf which is exposed to the sunlight has shown the blue black color and remaining part not showed any blue black color why because there is no photosynthesis so the color of the leaf is stained with iodine can you tell why it why because the leaf is stained with blue black color when it is reacting with iodine only or betadine solution due to the presence of starch in that region next is the chlorophyll and photosynthesis so Angen he proposed that only green parts of the plant could carry out the photosynthesis but in those days the scientists had big big questions and these questions were what about the colored leaves if you see in the movies or in uh, some pictures the plant leaves so leaves of some plants are in uh, yellow in color or orange in color so what about that leaves are they going to perform photosynthesis that is one question and the colored changing of the new leaves so the leaves when they are young they are in the brown color and they grow older so the brown colored young leaves will turn into green color so what about them do, do they contain green uh, uh, chlorophyll and next is the green colored animals some like parrots it is in the green color so is it going to perform photosynthesis these all are the questions so in the year 1817 Peltier and Cavento these two scientists extracted the chlorophyll from the leaf what is chlorophyll it is a green color pigment which is present in the leaf okay and scientists took around the uh, scientists located the sites of the photosynthesis in the 20th century and a green colored substance was isolated of the four decades of the Anganau's propositions okay so the question is where does the photosynthesis takes place the photosynthesis takes place in the thylakoid membranes that is nothing but these thylakoid membranes are present in the where they are present they are present in the chloroplast okay so these thylakoid membranes contains chlorophyll pigment just now we have discussed about it where is the chlorophyll and other pigments are present obviously the chlorophyll and other pigments are present in the chloroplast okay it is an organelle chloroplast is the organelle chlorophyll is a pigment and here they are asking try to name some parts of parts 
where do you think the photosynthesis occur so wherever there is a chlorophyll there is a photosynthesis chlorophyll is present in different regions of the plant whether if you see the young plants the stem has a chlorophyll leaf has a chlorophyll and so on so they are going to perform the photosynthesis okay but do you think the new reddish leaves of the plants also carry out photosynthesis obviously the green colored uh, the leaves which are other than the green color they are also going to perform photosynthesis why because they contains other pigments the leaf contains other pigments like xanthophylls carotenoids and so on so hence they are going to appear in different different colors why while they contains they contain some amount of the chlorophyll and this chlorophyll is dominated by these pigments and hence whether the domination is there or not they are going to perform the photosynthesis okay so in the year 1833 the julius von sachs he proposed that the chlorophyll is not spread entirely the previously the other scientists thought that the chlorophyll is spread entirely but he said that the chlorophyll is not spread entirely but they are present in the organelle known as a chloroplast okay and they he said that around 4200 chloroplast are present in the leaf in the present in the cell that is nothing but the stromal guard cells brown tissue etc and so on so in the in the diagram you can see the uh, not not in the diagram in the textbook you can see there is a diagram transfer section of the leaf so transfer section of leaf means if you cut the leaf half so this region this region how it is going to look like so this is the cuticle okay beneath the cuticle there are the cells okay parenchyma and also xylem and phloem tissues so again the spongy parenchyma okay and after the again you can see the cuticle here there will be here there will be a a structure that is known as stomata so these are the, these are the sites of the exchanging the gases like carbon dioxide oxygen and so on okay this is a star, this is a diagram you can see in the textbook okay so next after that daniel i are known in the year 19 uh, 1950 for isolate the chloroplast by breaking the cells so gently to study the different steps of the photosynthesis so just now we have seen that the chloroplast is a organelle which is contain the chlorophyll so here you can see the chloro uh, chloroplast it contain three membranes this is the first membrane so next is the second membrane and third membrane is going to form this that is nothing but the thylakoid membrane so this is the third membrane that is present in the chloroplast okay so here you can see the important structures like stroma so the yellow colored yellow color structure in the chloroplast is known as stroma and in this stroma we can see the enzymatic reaction so what is meant by enzymatic reaction in the photosynthesis we have seen the glucose molecules are produced so the glucose molecules turns into starch okay so a turning of glucose molecules into starch is an enzymatic reaction so enzymatic reaction such kind of enzymatic reactions is going to occur in the stroma this stroma is a fluid like structure semi semi solid fluid like structure that is present in the chloroplast okay so next is thylakoid membranes you can see here that sac like structures which is placed one above the other so the sac like structures are known as thylakoid membranes here the one, how many thylakoid membranes are there 1 2 3 4 and so on there are there may be a number of thylakoid membranes one above the other so if you place the thylakoid membranes one above the other how it is looking like it is looking like a placing of kinds one above the other so if the thylakoid membranes are placed one above the other they that is known as grana okay so or you can call it as a granum so between the two granum you can see that there is a connections or joining these connections or joining are known as stroma lamellae okay so next these thylakoid membranes also a third membrane they are responsible for the trapping of the sunlight why they are trapping the sunlight why because it contains the, it contains a chlorophyll which is responsible for the trapping of sunlight and the production of the glucose molecules okay so next the magnesium ions the magnesium is present in the chlorophyll like iron in the hemoglobin so in the rbc you can see the hemoglobin molecules so these are the heme groups these heme groups contains iron okay it contains iron so this iron is responsible this hemoglobin is responsible for the showing of a red red color to the blood okay while if you see in the in the chlorophyll the same almost same structure is present but instead of iron it contains magnesium okay instead of iron it contains magnesium so this is only the difference small difference between these two the between the between the hemoglobin and also chlorophyll so here around it contains the chlorophyll a which is blue green in color and chlorophyll b which is yellow green in color 
and they are saying that 250 to 400 pigments uh, molecules act as a light harvesting complex. So what is meant by light harvesting? It means light harvesting complex means they are going to trap the sunlight. So these thylakoid membranes they are going to trap the sunlight. So the pigment molecules are around 250 to 400. Okay, so they are very much important in trapping the sunlight. So hence we can call it as a light harvesting complex. So next, several events occur in the chloroplast during the photosynthesis. Example, conversion of light into energy, okay, light, light energy into chemical energy, splitting of water molecule, uh, that is nothing but photolysis of water, reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates, etc. These all are the important several steps that we are going to discuss under the, under, under the topic known as mechanism of the photosynthesis, okay. And light is required to initiate several events while the several uh, several may continue even in the absence of light. That is nothing but capture light helps in the events of the dark reaction. So let us move to the mechanism of the photosynthesis. We are we are going to discuss about light and uh, light dependent and light independent reactions. So here light dependent reactions are also known as photochemical phase. So here the photo means light, chemical means there is a production of some chemicals with the help of light that is known as photochemical phase. Phase means it is a kind of a stage. So it occurs in the chloroplast. Okay, the chloroplast is necessary why because the chloroplast contains chlorophyll and its phase is initiated by the light. Means light is very much important to start this reaction. Okay, hence we are going to call it as a light dependent reaction. Light dependent means it is light is necessary for this reaction. So this chlorophyll, it, which is present in the thylakoid membranes, known as grana, thylakoid is known as grana. So here there is a three step. The first step is the chlorophyll get activated by the absorbing photons. Absorbing means the tiny packets of light. Okay. So next is the Hills reaction step. So here in the Hills reaction step, the H2O water molecules is going to split into H plus ions and OH minus ions. So these are the most important uh, important step. So this is leading to the formation of H plus and OH minus ions. So what is meant by ion? Can you see here? The previously H is there, it is normal state, it is a normal atom. But you can see the symbol over it, why if the symbol is present over it, you can call it as a ion. Ion means the electron should be less or electron should be more, but not same. And here also you can see the OH minus, the symbol, the symbol is indicating that it is a not a normal atom, okay. It contains more, it contains less atom or uh, less electrons or more electrons. So, if the electrons are less or if the electrons are more, that is known as ion. We are going to discuss about these ions and also ions, atoms, subatomic particles in the physics chapter, okay. And next is that step 3 that is OH minus ions undergo series of steps to produce the water, oxygen and so on. So, here the water is used by the plants and oxygen is released into the environment. So, here the most important step is in the Hills reaction we have seen the H plus ions are produced. These H plus ions are produced by the NADP. So NADP is get reduced by absorbing the H plus ions. NADP, okay. It is going to absorb H plus ions to reduce NADPH, okay. It is the most important form, important step. So next is ADP. ADP means adenosine diphosphate. It is going to, uh, it is going to accept inorganic phosphate. It is inorganic phosphate, why? Because the phosphate doesn't contain any carbon, okay. So it is going to turn into ATP, okay. It is a, by absorbing the energy, energy which is coming from the photosynthesis. So these two, NADPH and ATP are known as assimilatory powers. So assimilatory means they are going to store some amount of energy which is required in the future steps, okay. So these NADP and ADP are stored in the, are, uh, they are formed at the end of the light reaction. They enter into the another reaction known as light independent reactions. So here you can see the biosynthetic phase. So biosynthetic phase means in, it, is, it is very much important in the biological functions. It doesn't require any light. And here there is a synthesis, synthesis of some important component. So hence we can call it the biosynthetic phase. We are calling it as a light independent reaction. Why? Because it is uh, it is uh, not depending on the light. It may these reactions may occur in the night time, or these reactions may occur in the daytime. So, irrespective of light, irrespective of night and day, these reactions are going to occur whenever there is necessary. Okay. And NADPH. Just now we have seen in the light uh, dependent reaction, NADPH is formed. It is reduced to form. 
it is going to combine with carbon dioxide by utilizing the ATP. So ATP means adenosine triphosphate is the energy rich compound. So to produce the glucose molecules which requires several steps. So several steps are present in the several steps RUBP is one of the important component. So RUBP is rublose 1 5 bisphosphate which is going to accept the carbon dioxide. So by all these several steps at the end of the reaction the glucose is converted into starch. So this is about light independent reaction. So this light independent reaction is going to occur in the, the stroma, the stroma of the chloroplast. Okay. This is the heterotropic nutrition. Heterotropic nutrition means these are the organisms that cannot synthesize their own food material. Hence they are going to depend on other organisms. So next they adopt different strategies of the food intake and utilization and etc and so on. You can, here you can see the important steps like saprophytic nutrition, parasitic nutrition, internal digestion, and external digestion. Saprophytic means depending on dead organic matter, dead matter or some other uh, some other decomposing matter that is known as saprophytic nutrition. Example, rhizophus. It is going to depend on other uh, or other dead matter. So next is the parasitic nutrition means one organism is going to depend on other organism for the food and sometimes shelter also okay so this is known as parasitic nutrition so next is the internal digestion example human beings they are going to eat the food material the food material will get digested inside the body okay next external digestion means digestion it is occurring outside the body example the fungus will digest the food material outside the uh, outside the body it is a uh, it is a food material okay the fungus the fungus is going to release the enzymes the enzymes will digest the food material again these enzymes will uh, these nutrients will be taken back okay this is known as external digestion okay so these are the definitions of the saprophytic nutrition okay the saprophytic nutrition includes the molds yeast mushrooms etc so parasitic means these organisms depend on other organisms example la cascuta it is a plant parasitic plant that we are going to discuss after a moment lice leeches tapeworms etc okay Next, internal digestion means uh, it is a digestion that is occurring inside the body. Example, human beings. So, a complexity of the organs increases, different parts of the body become specialized. So, if you see the amoeba, so it is a simple digestion. Okay. And if you come to the human beings, there is a huge system, a complete digestive system is present. Okay. This is most important. It means complexity is increasing from the amoeba to human beings. Why? Because it is most the human beings are most complex organisms and amoeba is simpler one okay so this is a main change so in the amoeba the food is taken from the pseudopodia so what is pseudopodia so let us know this is the amoeba and there is a bacteria or food material over here so it is going to produce one finger like projections over here and also over here so these finger like projections are known as pseudopodia and they will form and they will eat the bacteria so hence you can see in the in the amoeba you can see the food vacuole is formed containing the food food or bacteria so this is known as pseudopodia pseudo means false podia means locomotory organelle so it is false why because after some time they will get mixed with the membrane of the amoeba okay so in the paramecium also you can see the food moved into cytostome so this is the cytostome and the food is moved, the cilia is a hair like structure, the food will be pushed towards the oral groove like cytostome and it will enter into it and there is these food materials will be trapped in the food vacuole, the digestion will occur over here. So nutrients are taken and indigestible food material will be eliminated outside the body. Okay. So this is a nutrition, this is a type of digestion that you can see in the paramecium. It is a slipper shaped animal. So next is the parasitic nutrition in cascuta. So here you can see the daughter. Daughter is a parasitic plant. It is appears to be a web like a thin stem evolve enveloping the host plant. Let us consider this is a host plant. Okay. So on the host plant you will see some thread like structures which is hanging. Okay. So it is dust. Uh, these structures will be like uh, you know, brown in color or sometimes red in color and so on. So these are these are nothing but a daughter plants. It is a parasitic plant. So first. The daughter is belonging to the genus Cascuta. It belongs to the morning glory family known as Convolvulaceae, and the genus containing about 170 twining species. So twining species means this is the host plant, and the, this is the daughter. It is going to germinate. When it germinates, it contains a root system. Okay, 
so they are known as anchoring roots and it will search the host plant it will germinate and look like a small uh, thread like structure it will search the host plant by uh, rotating around some other thing okay by revolving around itself so after that it will find the host plant it will generate it will uh, attach the host plant so let us we will zoom here and we will show you how it looking like so this is the host plant and this uh, this is the daughter plant so as soon as it finding the host plant it is going to produce a hostoria hostoria into the host plant it is going to penetrate hostoria into the host plant and where as soon as the it is penetrating the hostoria into the xylemate phloem vessels of the host plant the root which is formed these are going to rot away it means they are going to get damaged and come from that point of time this hostoria is going to twine around the host plant okay it is going to twining or coil around the host plant okay by this way it is going to form and it will spread it will climb on to the top of the tree and it will look like a spider web okay it will look like a spider web this is about the main feature of the host plant that is known as dodder okay so it is containing but some species of the dodder has a less chlorophyll that is known as cascuda reflex it has a less amount of the chlorophyll except that most of the species of the cascuda do not have any chlorophyll and the stem look like yellow in color pink color or orange in color okay and wait a moment okay and the sastoria penetrate into the tissue of the host plant and draws water and xylem into the uh, nutrients of the phloem so that is nothing uh, that is nothing but new hostoria will be formed so next the nutrition human beings in the human beings also you will see the nutrition wait a moment okay fine so next is the human digestive system it is a complex and different parts are involved in it like it is starting from the mouth and it is ending with the anus okay from the mouth to anus it is a long alimentary canal so alimentary canal is a long tube extending from the mouth to anus and various digestive juices enzymes and digesting material food materials are involved in it so next uh, we are going to discuss about the passage of food through the alimentary canal or the gut so the first when the food is kept into the mouth in the mouth the food materials will get digest uh, will get masticated it means you are going to chew the food material thoroughly and they are going to enter into the enter into the uh, digestive tract okay that is nothing but into the esophagus and from the esophagus into the uh, stomach and so on so here you can see the three pairs of the salivary glands first is the parotid gland over here okay just right near to the rooftop of the mouth and here is a sublingual gland and also parotid gland over here they are going to release a salivary amylase that is going to help the digesting the food material and this is a nasal cavity okay and a pair that is first submandibular second pair is the submaxillary and third pair is the parotid gland over here okay so next next is the digestion is a process of breaking down the complex food materials into simpler nutrients which can be absorbed by the body and here the different enzymes are pro uh, processing the digestion that is example salivary amylase uh, that is going to act on the carbohydrates that is nothing but starch in the mouth if you eat the food material if you put some amount of starch in the mouth the starch will turn into the glucose why because there is a digestion process occurring here okay here when the food is passing when the food is passing over here in the through the esophagus so here this is the esophagus this is the esophagus and uh, this esophagus will show such kind of uh, uh, movement that is known as wave like movement so before and after the food of the food is passing you can see the wave like movement such wave like movement in the esophagus is known as peristalsis okay this is the bolus this is the bolus it is nothing but partial digestive food material okay so here the enzymatic and acidic environment in the stomach when the food is reached into the stomach and these are going to help in the breakdown of the most of the proteins so here the chyme is slime uh, chyme is uh, uh, slightly a food material which is containing the broken food material like carbohydrates proteins and so on 
so these all are going to enter into the small intestine so first the food is acidic in nature the food is acidic in nature the acidic nature of the food turns into basic nature why because when the acidic nature of the food from the stomach is entering into the intestine small intestine from the stomach to intestine okay small intestine so there is a releasing of the bile salts okay the bile salts will be released so when the bile salts are released the acidic nature will turn into basic nature so in the intestine the act the enzymes will act on the food material and converts into nutrients okay the food will get converted into nutrients that is known as digestion so here we can see the pyloric sphincters it means let us consider this is a stomach okay so this is the stomach and uh, this here the here there will be walls and here also there is a wall these walls are known as pyloric sphincters they will regulate the movement of the food material okay and here after that this food material will enter into the small intestine through a c shaped structure that is known as duodenum into the duodenum the into the duodenum when the food is passing different kinds of enzymes and also bile salts will be released hence this acidic nature of the food material turns into basic nature okay basic nature so this is about it and uh, this small intestine is as a long part of the alimentary canal it is sites for the further digestion of the carbohydrates fats and so on so next is succus centricus it is a small intestinal juice secreted by the small intestine and which aids in the breakdown of the proteins for the small intestine in smaller in the molecule aiding means helping okay so the carbohydrate digests the starch in the mouth enzyme activity decreases from the medium and changes into alkaline means acidic nature is turned into basic nature here in the enzyme chart you can see so enzyme or substrate that is nothing but phthalein so it is secreted by the salivary gland so this complete enzymes are going enzymes or substrates are going to say about their secretion which gland they are secreted from secreted and into which organ they are secreted digest juices what are the juices they contain and on which substance they subst uh, which substance they are going to act on it and what they produced if they are going to act on it so these all are the things that is shown by here shown over here okay so the tylin pepsin and amylase trypsin lipase peptidase sucrase these all are the enzymes so here yeah, most of the enzymes having the aac suffix but a few enzymes you do not have the aac okay aac not present example tylin if you see the tylin doesn't have any aac and if you see the sucrase it contains aac so some enzymes have the aac suffix some enzymes do most of the enzy some enzymes do not have the aac okay and uh, see this uh, flowchart once so that you will get one clear idea okay so name the enzymes which act on the carbohydrates that is nothing but salivary amylase is going to act on the sucrase so which juice contains no enzyme that is bile juice contains no enzymes what are the end products of the fats so fatty acids and glycerol these are the end products of the fats so what are the enzymes that act on proteins pepsin and trypsin these two are the things that is going to act on the proteins okay so next the absorption and transportation of the digested food materials into the blood stream blood through the intestine so whatever the food materials that is get digested they will absorb into the intestine let us consider this is the small intestine a long tube like structure and here you will see the small finger like structures so these small finger like structures are known as what they are called they are known as villi so if you zoom here so this is the wall of the intestine okay so this wall of the intestine has small finger like structure these are known as villi so the, what they are going to do the food is digested food is digested into nutrients so these nutrients are taken up by these villi okay these nutrients are taken up by the villi so that these nutrients are helping in the body build up okay build up of the body and also metabolic functions energy source and so on these all are the important these villi are going to involve in the absorption of the nutrients okay and maximum absorption and the food moves into the small intestine then to the large intestine after the food is digested they are going to move into the large intestine so in the large intestine you will see most of the water is absorbed the food contains water the food is absorbed the water is absorbed from the food material so here the food will not get digested some amount of food material will not get digested so that is nothing but indigested food material indigested food material okay so this indigestion food material will enter into the large intestine 
and this large intestine contains industrial food material, the waste materials and so on. Okay, these all components indigested food material plus waste materials are eliminated. So elimination of such kind of uh, components is known as defecation. Okay, defecation means excreting the waste materials from the large intestine is known as defecation. So the food passes through the anus, it contains the consumable amount of fats, proteins and so on. These all are the main components that is present in the fecal matter also. Okay. So the flow chart of the human digestive system includes first that it will start with mana, it with food and it the alimentary canal will start with the mouth and also ends with the anus. So when the food enters into the mouth, there is a mastication process and then food enters into the buccal cavity, then into the pharynx, then into the esophagus. In the esophagus, you can see the peristalsis, peristaltic movement. From the peri from the esophagus, you will see enters into the cardiac stomach. Cardiac stomach means it is near to the heart, like uh, near to the heart. Cardiac means refers to the heart. Then it will enter into the pyloric stomach. Then it enters into the duodenum. Duodenum is nothing but C-shaped like structure that is entering into the small intestine is known as duodenum. It is, uh, it is present between the stomach and between the small intestine. Between the stomach and small intestine, this uh, duodenum is present. So next, this duodenum has some kind of secretions like liver and also pancreas are going to release their secretions into the duodenum. So then it enters into the small intestine, okay. So the food enters into the small intestine, then into the large intestine, then into the rectum. From the rectum, the food materials will be eliminated. That is known as defecation, okay. So next, the health aspects of the elementary canal. So most of the time this elementary canal is going to function well but sometimes it is going to rebel when it is when we are falling sick or indigestion. So if, the, if you eat some amount of food material which contain, which is uh, unhealthy or which is containing some kind of toxins, your elementary canal is going to eliminate it. Eliminate it in that by a process known as vomiting. In the vomiting process you will see there is a reverse peristalsis. So the food is going to move from the stomach into the esophagus, from the esophagus into the mouth, from the mouth into the environment or outside the body that is known as vomiting. So next, sometimes if you eat the food material which is containing more fat, if you eat any um, food material which is containing more fat or more oil or which is containing the indigestion food material, then you are going to have a condition known as bilish or liverish. In these conditions, most of the time, in these conditions, the people will get fever, headache, and the morning time they will uh, vomit a green color cell, a green color fluid like structure or green or yellow like fluid like structure that is known as bile juice okay why because the these people are eating the very very rich food material containing fat or other substances the body or the liver cannot cope up with it okay so they cannot cope up with it as a result it such kind of uh, thing will be seen such kind of vomiting or bile or liver issue can be seen okay so next uh, you can have the healthy diet or healthy elementary canal by having these steps like nothing but health, having the healthy and simple well balanced meals. So next uh, eating the food leisurely take your own time to eat the food material proper mastication of the food material means you have to chew the food material properly in the mouth and avoiding the violent exercise soon after eating you should not do the exercise after the eating consuming the plenty of water and uh, having the regular bowel movement. If you, if you drink the proper amount of the water, water, so the digestion will be proper and the excretion will be proper, okay. Regular movement, bowel movements means there is a contractions and relaxations in the elementary canal to excrete the waste material, okay. And stomach and duodenal ulcers causes indigestion. So sometimes, mostly the ulcers means what? There is a damage onto the wall of the any organ, whether it may be small intestine or large intestine. So let's consider this is the wall, and if there is a damage on the wall, that is known as ulcer. So, as a result from this damage or from this wound, the blood will leak out. So, so that is known as ulcer. These ulcers may occur in the small intestine, or uh, they may occur in the stomach, or sometimes they may occur in the mouth also. Okay, the people will feel a small, a sharp pain when they feel ulcers especially in the mouth okay and recent research said that the bacteria some kind of bacteria and unhygienic food material also going to cause ulcers unhygienic means the food which is containing the uh, waste materials like where the food may contain the bacteria or the food may contain in the some, some kind of toxin such kind of 
food is known as unhygienic food and these are going to cause the ulcers and defeat the food material which is containing the fiber so fiber means it is a dietary fiber not uh, the fiber that you see in the physics subject in the physics subject you can see the optical fibers optical fibers here the biological fiber nothing but dietary fibers okay we will discuss about the optical fiber also in the physics so dietary fibers so it is the most important for the uh, prevention of the constipation constipation means the people who they have the problem in the morning to defecation so it means they they are unable to excrete the waste materials from the body so such kind of difficulty in excreting the waste material that is known as constipation if you eat the more amount of the fiber the problem of the constipation will be more and more less okay this is due to malnutrition what are the diseases that you will get if you eat less amount of the nutrients or the nutrients that is less in the food material so what is meant by malnutrition malnutrition means the any food material which containing the one or more less nutrients that is known as malnutrition whether it may contain carbohydrates less whether it may contain protein or vitamins or minerals or fats so if this important component or nutrients that is not present in the food that is known as malnutrition so diet should be balanced and one should contain proper amount of the carbohydrates proteins vitamins minerals and fats okay so next there are three types of the malnutrition so that is calorie malnutrition protein malnutrition and also protein calorie malnutrition calorie malnutrition means they have the less amount of sugars calorie refers to the energy from where you will get the energy by eating the sugars that is nothing but glucose starch etc so they are, they contains the, the food contains less amount of the sugars that is known as calorie malnutrition the food contains a less amount of the proteins that is known as protein malnutrition if the proteins and sugars are less in the food material that is means protein calorie malnutrition okay so especially the cashier disease it is going to occur due to the protein deficiency in the diet that is one of the problem and these people they have symptoms like accumulation of the water in the intercellular junctions let us consider this is the hand and in the hand you will see the cells okay so the cells between the cells is known as intercellular inter means in between in between the cells the water will get accumulated okay so this accumulation of water is present between the intercellular junctions as a result the swelling will be seen swelling means is a normal skin and if any mosquito or some other animal bites so what you will see the swelling will be seen so the swelling will be occurring in these people because of the accumulation of the water in the intercellular junctions okay as a result they will have the swollen legs the legs will be much larger when compared to the normal legs and a fluffy face why because their their face looks like a moon and so that due to the accumulation of water and hence they have the difficulty in eating due to this swelling and other symptoms includes diarrhea means excreting the water like uh, fecal matter okay or sometimes in the fecal matter they can see the blood and sometimes mucus that is known as diarrhea dry skin they have the dry skin why because they don't have the proper nutrition poor muscle development and so on next is the marasmus it is going to occur due to the protein and also calorie deficiency okay factors includes the mainly immediate second pregnancy so the after the delivery of the baby so the minimum two years sh gap should be there but these people what they will do so they will not give the two years gap so right after the six months or five months they will have the second pregnancy okay so after second to second pregnancy around our nine months after they will have the delivery okay it means the mother do not have enough time to have the proper nutrition in that condition how she can provide all nutrients to the growing baby it is not possible so in that case they will get the disease known as marasmus okay why because it is protein calorie malnutrition these people will these children will have the such kind of uh, such kind of effect or disease known as malnutrition symptoms includes lean and weak these people are very much lean and weak and they have the less developed muscles skin dry skin and also diarrhea next is the ob obesity so it is completely opposite to the opposite to the marasmus and also kwashiorkor so why because these people will take more amount of excess food material the food material which is very very rich in calories rich in proteins rich in vitamins fats so as a result they will become very very fat okay so they are the targets these children are the targets of many diseases when they grow older so the main disease is diabetes 
next the cardiovascular disease related, related to the heart cardio means heart next renal disease renal means kidney okay these are not only these three types of the diseases they are going to face many types of the diseases when they when they grow older so next the vitamin deficiency so vitamin is also a type of nutrients so first we have to understand what is meant by vitamins vitamins are nothing but organic substances so what is organic organic means these are the micronutrients required in the small quantities generally the people will not suffer from the vitamins and the body can synthesize cannot synthesize body cannot synthesize the vitamins hence the source is of two types one is through the microorganisms which is present in the gut that is known as symbiosis you people are you, our the human beings generally do not only human beings but also other animals they have the microorganisms in their gut okay what is microorganisms will do you are helping the bacteria by providing food and shelter okay food and shelter and bacteria is going to provide nutrients to you important nutrients to you it means you are helping the bacteria and bacteria is also helping to you that process is known as symbiosis okay symbiosis so this is the main thing microorganisms are going to produce the some amount of vitamins and another another source is the food food is another one source of vitamins and microorganisms is also another source of the vitamins so based on solubility they are classified into two groups one is water soluble so water soluble means these vitamins are soluble in the water hence they are they are known as water soluble and some vitamins are no soluble in the fat soluble means they are going to get dissolved so if the vitamins that are soluble in water known as water soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins and the vitamins that are soluble in the fat known as fat soluble if you see on the oil packets in the supermarket you will see the vitamin d enriched so vitamin d means the vitamin d is the fat soluble vitamin hence the vitamin d will dissolve in the or soluble in the fat or oil only okay next the the vitamin c is the uh, before that we will discuss about water soluble vitamins water soluble vitamins like b vitamin b complex and also vitamin c is a water soluble and next fat soluble means vitamin a d and k so in hindi there is a sentence like a dekh okay a dekh a d e and k they are fat soluble vitamins so deficiency of vitamins causes some disorders in the body those disorders are here you can see here vitamin b1 vitamin b2 vitamin b3 b6 and b12 these all are the vitamin b complex vitamins so vitamin b1 means it is it is thiamine it is a thiamine and it is it is a resources these all are the food materials that are present in the vitamin uh, that is present in the vitamin okay it means if you eat these food materials you will get a rich amount of the vitamin b1 so deficiency causes diseases like beriberi symptoms like vomiting vomiting means they are going to expel the food material from the body fits loss of appetite difficulty in breathing paralysis and so on paralysis means the connection between the brain and organ will be lost as a result the uh, that organ will not function example hand or leg so next vitamin b2 it is known as a riboflavin these are the rich sources of the riboflavin glossitis in some children you can see the mouth is getting cracked at the corners that is known as glossitis these people will have the sore and red tongue their tongue will become will look like red in color they have the photophobia photo means light phobia means fear they have the fear of the light they have the scaly skin next the vitamin b3 vitamin b3 is known as niacin they are sources like kidney liver meat etc they have the pellagra so in these uh, the symptoms like dermatitis inflammation of the skin the skin will get swollen and they have the diarrhea loss of memory and also the scaly skin so next vitamin b6 is also known as pyridoxine these are the four resources or the food material containing the b6 they contains anemia anemia means less rbc the rbc will be very very less in the blood they have a hyper irritability it means they cannot respond properly to the stimuli stimuli means the change in the environment like uh, horn or like uh, asking any questions these all are the stimuli that is occurring in the nature but he, these people cannot respond properly to that next is the nausea like headache vomiting fits and so on vitamin b6 is a basic b2 uh, b6 is also known as pyridoxine okay and vitamin b3 is pyridoxine vitamin uh, uh, here you can you don't have the vitamin b6 i uh, have yeah, vitamin b6 is pyridoxine vitamin b3 
B3 is known as niacin. Okay, vitamin B3 is niacin. Vitamin B6 is known as pyridoxine. And here you can see here vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is the cyanocobalamin. These are the food minerals that are rich in it. And here they have the pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia means in the anemia which is a severe in condition. They have the lean, weak, and also they have the less appetite. Less appetite means they will feel less hunger. Okay. So folic acid, these are the food minerals that are rich in, they have the anemia, anemia means less RBC. They have the diarrhea, loss of leukocytes, uh, uh, next is the intestinal mucus problems and so on. Intestinal mucus problem means in the intestine there is some kind of mucus, okay. The secretion of uh, mucus is very very less, that is known as mu intestinal mucus problems. So next is the, another vitamin known as pantothenic acid. So, pantothenic acid that is a rich source is like uh, potatoes, groundnuts, vegetables, liver, kidney, etc. So, they have the disease like burning feet, they have the symptoms like walking problems, sprain, etc. So, next is the biotin, these are the sources and they have the nerves disorder. That means nervous system is not proper, okay, the not proper in structure that is known as nerves disorder. They have the fatigue, mental depression, muscle pain, etc. It's a vitamin C. They are uh, resources like green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits, sprouts, etc. Sprouts means the seeds which are growing condition. Okay, these seeds that are, that are growing condition known as sprouts. Next, they have the scurvy disease. They have the delay in wounding. It means the wound will not, injuries will not cure faster. They have the fractured bones also. Okay, bones will get fractured more often. And vitamin C is also known as, the vitamin C generally is known as a, ascorbic acid okay next is the vitamin a retinol these are the sources that are rich in they have the eye and skin diseases eye nothing nothing but night blindness xeropthalmia cornea failure scaly skin etc so vitamin d it is also known as sunshine vitamin you can call it as a calciferol okay liver egg butter cod liver oil these are the sources the diseases like rickets it means the bones will get bent that is known as rickets Improper formation of bones, knock knees, swollen wrist, delay in dentition and walking are, are weak bones. Next, vitamin E that is known as, vitamin E is also known as tocopherol. The, that is, rich sources, fish, uh, vegetables, sprouts, etc. So, they have the fertility disorders. Fertility disorders means they are unable to have children. So, there, is a, there will be a problem in producing gametes and uh, the sterility will be seen in males. It means they are unable to produce uh, gametes like spermatozoa. And in females, there is a chance of abortion, abortion, okay. Abortion means the death of the baby in the womb. And next is the vitamin K, okay. Vitamin K is also known as phylloquinones. They, they are rich in the green leafy vegetables and milk. And uh, these diseases are nothing but the main deficiency of vitamin K is going to cause blood clotting diseases and like delay in blood clotting and, the dent, uh, and also over bleeding, etc., okay. So these are about the diseases that you are going to that you are going to see in these people. So the main problem over here is these are the diseases that are going to cause vitamin deficiencies. These people, these people are most of the people will not suffer from the vitamin deficiencies. Okay, and the revision of this chapter is over. Okay, the revision is completed, and in the next lesson that is the le the lecture the lecture 11 we will discuss about the test okay we are going to conduct a small test about this chapter okay we are going to discuss about the about that uh, test paper and uh, how the test paper is and so on okay and link will be pasted in the uh, in the description box and so on okay and in the lecture 12 in the we are going to start another lecture that is uh, another chapter that is known as chapter 2 respiration respiration the energy releasing system okay energy releasing system okay and we are going to discuss about this respiration and after the discussion of the question paper and you can also attend that uh, exam exam paper also okay so it is completely based on the computer based test and I hope this lecture is helpful to you and also we will see you in the next lecture okay